Hello everybody, this is Miles Luigi welcoming you to a special roundtable edition. Our people on the roundtable today include... Evil Pop-Tart! And Higsby. So as we all know, Nintendo's sales figures have been kind of dropping like a rock. Um, their CEO, Iwata, is actually taking a 50% price cut along with some of their other CEOs, including Miyamoto, is taking a 20% price cut. Nintendo's kind of in the dumpster. Correction, salary cuts. <laughs> oh, salary yeah, cuts. Salary cuts. Oh, I... Well, thank you for correcting me, but generally I kind of wanted to start a roundtable talking a little bit about Nintendo, because I myself am kind of worried about them. I like Nintendo, but I want them to turn around. Uh, just to get the topic started a little bit, I want to just, I guess, start with what I think Nintendo should do. I personally think Nintendo should release possibly a 3DS, or I think it's a little early for a new mobile console, but a mobile console that's also a phone. Because people nowadays always have their phones, and I would immediately jump on a Nintendo phone if they made it. I don't even care if it's not Android or I, I Apple, whatever. Just a Nintendo phone, something I can call other people with, and look, holy crud. I can play my Mario game on my phone as well. You'd sell a bajillion copies! Ah, uh, but I just have a feeling Nintendo's not going to do that, because I've been arguing them to do that since 2010. Do you guys have any thoughts on this? Um, It's never going to happen. It, it, yeah, <laughs> well, I'll chime in. Too. It's, it's not going to happen. I mean, as much as... How sexy that would be if Nintendo actually had a phone so we can play all our, you know, Super Mario Worlds uh, on our phones instead of having to emulate them on other phones and then worry about whether the emulators work or not, or if we can do emulation on these phones. Uh, it's not, it's not the vision. It's just who's gonna really buy that. I mean, it's just, it's a Nintendo phone. It's just gonna be like any other phone, and then it's gonna get scrutinized for being a phone. So, I mean, it's a vicious cycle. You, you say you want a phone, then when it comes out and they give you a phone, we're going to scrutinize them, and everybody's going to make fun of it for that. So it's like, well... Fair point. It is a bit of a risk. Although, <laughs> at this point, with the Nintendo and the shape they need, they kind of need some kind of risk, don't they? Um, they need something. They need to reevaluate everything they've got. Because right now, they're, they're not doing uh, well at all, especially with this Wii U. Um, this The whole Wii U thing has kind of blown up in their face, as it was predicted by some early, when, you know, they released it early, but even before the PS4 and Xbox One was announced, saying, hey, look, Nintendo's got our next-gen console, this is next-gen, the Wii U with this mobile pad and this blah and this, this stuff. I'm going to go out on a limb here and just, you know, some people are going to hate me for this, and you can hate me for all I want, but you can probably assume what I'm about to say is I've really never liked Nintendo and basically after the Wii. I mean, even before the Wii. It was always a gimmick. What the hell is with this shake your hand and use the exercise stuff with the Wii remote and do this and do that? It's, it was a gimmick. It's always been a gimmick. And obviously it continued with the Wii U. Uh, the last serious Nintendo system I liked was literally the GameCube. It has a fuck ton of games for it. At least decent games, anyway. Um, it was decent it wasn't too bad you got to play your game boy advance stuff on it with the adapter and it had some really decent titles on it and they it was good they were good i i don't like the direction nintendo's been going in for the last years i i nintendo doesn't appeal to me it really doesn't i don't know how many times you can play freaking mario with different recycled <laughs> trash how many times can you play mario galaxy and the go look mario galaxy 2 hmm that's recycled from the first game. That's recycled from the first game. That's definitely recycled. Oh, look, they just remixed this song, made it just a little bit different, and say it's new. Come on, guys. Seriously here. It's uh, uh, it's, it's, it's it's a tough market. <laughs> I have to give them a lot of credit for what they were trying to do. But it's just not working anymore. They're not buying into these gimmicks. Um, can I give... You may, you may come. You may in. have a voice. You have a voice here. It's a round table. Okay, because to be fair, yeah, we we obviously before we started this round table, we did have a little bit of a discussion about this. And my argument with recent Mario games is just that I don't feel motivated to play them anymore because the only reason you would want to play a Super Mario game 
is for the gameplay itself. There's absolutely no other driving factors to make you want to play a Mario game. There's absolutely no story to make you want to play for. So as you're going through the levels, it's not like, okay, I want to see what happens next. You know, I want to see where all of this is going. It's like, no, you know the game is going to end at World 8 with a typical Bowser fight, with Mario saving Princess Peach, and then them frolicking through the fields, and then you get a credit screen, and then you're dumped back on the title screen. Like, seriously. There's nothing to kind of pull you through these Mario games. That's why I love Paper Mario. I mean, the battle system is awesome and unique, and the story is usually awesome and hilarious. So, Paper Mario games are great. So, where the heck has that been? And that's, of course, you know, the problem with Sticker Star. Let's take out everything that made those Mario games great and put in the same typical crap that you know is going to go exactly like all these other Mario games are. Like, so there's no story to make you want to go through. The music is okay. I would never, I, don't, I can't really name too many Mario games where I would say the music is absolutely fantastic and I can listen to it all day. Okay, maybe the Galaxy games. The Galaxy games had pretty decent soundtracks. They were actually pretty good. But I mean, look at, look at, um, Super Mario 3D Land and 3D World. The music in those games is okay. Nothing really stands out as absolutely spectacular. Maybe one or two songs in the whole game. But I mean, it's not that, like, all the other songs aren't that enjoyable to listen to throughout all, you know, the levels where they're just constantly repeated. Um, so, I mean, the music is okay. There's no story to make you kind of want to play through the game. So, it all comes down to the gameplay. And with the same rehashed gameplay, I don't care if they added a new cat suit or whatever. It's the same gameplay. And it's just, like... I'm kind of getting sick of it. I mean, maybe some people aren't. I've been playing Mario games since before I can even remember, back in the days of the NES. And just, I mean, I've been playing it all the way through, and I've even played, you know, some of the games from back then multiple times. I beat Mario 64 multiple times, Mario Sunshine multiple times. And for these new games coming out, it's just like, it just feels like the same thing that I've done multiple, multiple times. So without the story to make me, you know, to make it feel fresh and new, so I mean, even if I'm not enjoying the gameplay as much as I used to, it would at least kind of pull me forward, but no, that's not there. So with just the gameplay alone, I just don't feel motivated to play many of the new, newer, mod new, newer Mario games because it's like, it just feels like I've done it already. And so it, it's just, there's other things out there I should be playing instead. So that's my argument again against current day Mario games anyway. Wow. Um, I, I would yeah. personally argue there definitely is a saturation of Mario games because, I mean, you had Galaxy 1, then they immediately, I don't even think Nintendo intended this at first when they released Galaxy 1, but they're like, oh, hey, this was awesome. Let's make a Galaxy 2 and it ended up being a huge seller. I personally love both Galaxy 1 and Galaxy 2, but everything since then just, at, yeah, it has been rehashed. I mean, we had New Super Mario Bros. 2, which was New Super Mario Bros. with, with coins. And then we had New Super Mario Bros. Wii, which was New Super Mario Bros. but with four players. And then we had New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, which was New Super Mario Bros. Wii on HD, and we had New Super Luigi U, which was New Super Mario U with no Mario. <laughs> and then we have Super Mario 3D Land, and then we have Super Mario 3D World, and the games are basically the same except Super Mario 3D World, you play as a cat Mario instead of a Tanuki Mario, and Laura knows what next Mario game is going to come out. I have Super Mario 3D World now. I bought it on Target for 20 bucks off. I have no motivation to play the game. I'll eventually get to it, but even as a Mario fan, I am burnt out on Mario right now, to be completely honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> Yeah, absolutely. It just needs those things to mix it up. See, the whole reason I think we actually even started having this Nintendo conversation in the first place before we started recording this video was I was talking about Wario Land and how I absolutely love the Wario Land games because they go places that the Mario games don't go. They have a nice touch of story. They're not like, you know, completely story driven. Every time you jump over a cliff or something, there's an animated cutscene that lasts like 10 minutes, but they at least have that little bit of, you know, intrigue to make you want to play along and see where this is going. What, what crazy stuff is Wario going to get himself into. Uh, the level themes are completely out there. It's not grassland, desert, ocean, ice world, volcano, Bowser's castle, end of world eight, you beat the game. It's, you're going to all these crazy locations with like awesome soundtracks to match them that just the Mario games don't have. So like, I, I, that's the problem. I mean, nobody likes Wario land, <laughs> but it, it goes to those places that I think Mario platformers need to go to get some of that originality and, you know, interest back into the actual series. So it's not just the typical eight worlds of the same themes we've seen a million times in the same gameplay. So I, I, I'm Wario Land 6. Come on. But no, that's, that's my argument <laughs> for it. I just think that Mario... 
same thing and it needs to be changed up a lot but nintendo won't do that because they're too safe and mario has just created that hole for himself that he is the basic blank white piece of styrofoam that never changes character like that it's kid friendly and if they change that up you know millions of parents would be disgusted or something like that i don't know just nintendo they're not gonna mess with any of the things that they've established now i they, they just can't because like as we were talking about back with the phone nintendo is the child friendly system I, I mean i hate to admit it, i mean i'm not saying that nintendo is like for kids or anything like that but that seems to be the way they target their things i mean i definitely enjoy some nintendo games but they definitely model their things around you know always being child friendly obviously with the friend codes i mean we saw that i mean they're kind of breaking away from that now uh, but miles luigi was saying they should make a phone and i said that would never happen is look, they disabled swap note on the 3DS because, oh, people might be able to send, you know, bad pictures to each other. How's that going to work with a phone? One person's going to get a naughty text message and they'll be, like, recalling every person's phone. Like, it, it's just, <laughs> like, like it, 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 they're never going to go outside their comfort zone. They're always going to be that kitty thing where they, they, they can't go outside the box because, you know, they, that, that's, the one, I, that's the one thing they have going for them right now is that when parents look at the three choices, Nintendo's probably going to be the one that they buy for their younger kid. Maybe not necessarily these days. I don't know. A lot of parents are buying their kids Call of Duty or whatever. But, but I man, think that... I need the new Call of Duty. <laughs> I gotta be killing terrorists. And, mama, there's blood and guts and, and everything. And 12-year-olds are playing fucking COD when they should be playing fucking Nintendo games. Because it's rated M for mature. <laughs> Uh, you have to remember, a lot that, of parents nowadays were people who grew up on the NES and, you know, kid, video games this day, so I'm not entirely certain if that argument holds 100%, Walter, although I do understand that point of view. Yeah, if you're buying a console for your kids, probably the safest one is the Nintendo console. That does bring up another know, good alternate point, though. Nintendo has a lot of trouble with third-party content, and they've been having this trouble since the GameCube, and they've never improved if anything they keep getting worse and worse and the only things driving the wii u is the own titles and maybe a sonic title here and there <laughs> to really elaborate on that <laughs> if, if if you've ever seen any programming for the wii and for the wii u especially the wii u i mean the wii wasn't technically that bad but um it's it's a it's horrendous trying to figure out how to program for a wii and a wii u is just total and utter bs I mean, do some research on it. I mean, I, I could Google it right now, and I could find some developer writing an article somewhere telling you how bad it is to develop for it because of all the fucking hoops and shit you have to jump through because it all has to work with Nintendo's specifications and Nintendo's network. Their network is just crap. It really is. They've always pulled the Nintendo card. We're Nintendo. You'll do it our way or you're not going to do it at all. And most of the and these developers now they're like fine we're not going to do it at all because we have to put so much time and money into developing for your freaking crappy network then it really never goes anywhere nobody buys any of it Ugh. oh man that reminds mm -hmm. me back i remember reading super me boys blog and they wanted to release it for the wii in the wii shop but they couldn't because nintendo was like your game can't be bigger than 40 megabytes and they couldn't fit super Meat boy in <laughs> 40 megabytes why the fuck not why does it have yeah. to be 40 megabytes what restriction is set somewhere that it has to be 40 megabytes well look That's... that was the original wii how much memory did that thing come with 100 megabytes I mean, it was obviously a bit more than that, but I mean, like that, that was the Wii. The Wii was embarrassing. I mean, it was good, but then it was embarrassing, and that's one of the reasons why. Uh, they're they're really behind with, like I said, they're really behind with this whole. Hey, let's come out with the Wii U. That is our next gen console. We're not coming out with another one. They shot themselves in the foot right there, and that was predicted long before even this gen console came out. They said this isn't next gen. This is just a a freaking souped up steroided Wii. That's all it is. And then the whole platform gimmick thing, it, it relied too much on that gimmick. And it's, they need to, personally, my personal opinion on this, I'm not bashing Nintendo, but I, I just, I don't like their business model. They've always been for the kids, which is fine. If they want to go that way, that's fine too. But more and more of today's generation are wanting the PS3s and the Xbox Ones and more, more variety. I mean, I do got to give them credit 
considering Sony and Microsoft screwed up the whole Bayonetta thing where we weren't going to get Bayonetta 2. But that exclusive game wasn't going to trudge anybody out to go buy a Wii or a Wii U. It just wasn't. I mean, I I thought about buying a Wii a lot too long ago. I was touting about it, thinking about it, and going like, eh, should I, should I not? And I did my list. I said, okay, here's all the games I buy for it. It was only like seven games. Is that really worth spending $200 for seven games? There's nothing out there that was appealing. They need to get something out there to appeal to a master audience to get it. I mean, hell. That isn't Mario. Yeah, that isn't Mario. I mean, hell, people were buying Wii's just for yeah. Netflix because it was free. They weren't <laughs> playing any games on it. I mean, mm. granted, if it was going in a household with kids, sure, the kids would play Mario on it and do whatever. But what do you think the adults used it for? Netflix. They weren't playing fucking games on it. They were using it for Netflix. When they took that out of the <laughs> mini Wii, it was like, well, why the fuck should I buy that? Because I have, there's no internet. <sighs> that kind of goes into the argument that consoles nowadays are becoming more and more home entertainment devices, and the Wii U, I mean, bless its heart, it does have Netflix and it has those other things, but it's not, I guess, from my point of view, as featureful as either the PlayStation 4 or X-Bone, can, so... Can the Wii U even play DVDs? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't no know one's ever bothered. I, I, I have one. a Wii U. You need to throw a DVD in. Like, everything should know. be able to play Blu-ray and DVD these days. I, I don't own one, so toss one in. Find out. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't actually know. Holy cow. But I was also mentioning they really do need to get some more third-party developers. Because Nintendo's not going to pull themselves out of the hole. None of their other brands or I guess... Uh, IPs are going to pull them out of their hole. Like, even if they were like, oh, look, here's a new Metroid game, which I desperately want. Um, it's not oh, going to pull them out of the hole. <laughs> How many times can you play that, though? Why do you think we the whole Wario Land discussion again? I mean, I mean, you've got, okay, what, what do you Seven got? Seven years is... between Wario Land 4 and Wario Land Shake It, and then six years since that. What does, what does <laughs> Nintendo actually have? Zelda, Mario, Metroid, Wario, what else am I missing? Luigi, well, yeah, that's my Kirby. Argument. That's Everyone it? who owns a Nintendo console, look over at your game library right now, and it's going to be almost all first-party titles, right? Like, they just rehash the same things a million times, so, I mean, if you get sick of, the, of that, there's no third-party titles to go to. Exactly. So, and, and, oh, but there's third-party titles. Yes, there is, but they're gimmicks. Zombie U. I mean, think about it when the Wii U released. There was four games for it, I think I... Off the top of my head, I can think of four. But, I mean, it was Zombie U, and it was like, okay, okay, great, another zombie game. But it was playing off the gimmick of the Wii U. They were all gimmick. There was no decent titles for it. I mean, the only real decent title that I would consider a complete success was Wind Waker HD. They needed that. That was a must. And I actually sat down and played it, and it was damn good. Because it was an HD remake, and because I liked the original and they improved <laughs> on that. Granted, I think that is a validated purchase for that because it was an old nostalgic game. I'm a nostalgic gamer. Hello, Evil Pop Tarts nostalgia trip here. I, how many times do I go on a nostalgia trip in some of our Let's Plays? I, I'm a nostalgia gamer. I like the older games. These newer games suck. They're... Well, are, are we being hypocritical by saying we don't want the same rehash shit, but oh, we kind of want HD remix of our old favorite games? Fine, call me a hypocrite for that. But Zelda Wind Waker was actually, actually really good. Anything else that's been rehashed? No. I don't care if you call yeah, me a hypocrite. That's another one of my arguments right there. Is that I, I made this comment in the stream that you made recently. Is that with so many good games out there. And like so, like there's still good ones coming out now, and all the good ones from the past. I don't have any interest in playing mediocre games that come out these days, which I mean, like that, that's the problem. I would much rather go back and replay a game that I haven't played in ten years than buy a new game for sixty dollars that I'm only going going to enjoy half as much. And that's the problem. I feel like that is the problem with a lot of Nintendo's games these days, where I'd much rather go back and replay Wind Waker. Then you know, play a, a newer game. So I, I I think that's why when they re, when they release new games, they get such high appeal because they're just better and than the newer ones. And I'd much rather play them than you know the one that just doesn't feel as inspired as the older ones. I guess I don't know. <laughs> 
I mean, see, I guess and, that, and, that was the problem with um. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, see, I you mean, can go. <laughs> I, I would to to elaborate on that. I agree with you, Higsby. Why would I play some of this newer trash that's just cranked out every every couple of months or something, and it's really not that good when? I could sit down and play an older game that is well thought out, that had it, that's had its time taken with, that's that has more interaction in it than these newer games. They crank out new games about every other month, man. I mean, it's like, okay, so you crack out these new games. What is it? It's just just to make a quick buck? It's just, just to turn out cash? What is it? I mean, we mm-hmm. really need well, to go back well, look, into thinking the old ways. You need to take your damn time well, with this. Look at what I did last summer. Paper Mario Sticker Star came out, and I thought that was... I, I just did not enjoy it at all. So what did I do? Last summer, I went and replayed the first two Paper Mario games, which I hadn't done in a few years, and I had so much fun with that. So that is the perfect shining example. Why do I want to play this new mediocre game when I had two fantastic games that I hadn't played in a very long time just waiting to be replayed? And it had been so long that, you know, a lot of the key points of the, of the game... Like, you know, weren't fresh in my mind anymore. So I was like, oh, wow, you know, I, I remember that from when I was a kid. And I didn't remember that. So that's actually really cool. So I would much rather go back and do that than just push myself through these games that I don't enjoy these days. And that's the problem. So, like, there. Like, there you go. Like, that that's it right there. Like, I'm not going to play Sticker Star when I have a bajillion games that I should be going back and playing instead. So I don't have time for mediocre games in, you know, the world where I'm so busy with school and all that, A, and B, when my minimal video game time should go towards games that actually deserve it. And many games today do not deserve it. So, yeah. That's I that. agree. <laughs> go, to, go to games that are worth a damn, not that you sit there and go, well, this game sucks. <laughs> 